Hey everyone, are you in need of a Steve Hayes fix as well? I know I am, it's been a long time. Welcome to Tired Old Queen at the Movies. Let's go see Steve Hayes. Ooh, Johnny! Tired Old Queen at the Movies. Johnny, we hadn't done a light, sophisticated screwball comedy in a while, so I decided to do a Preston Sturges movie, 1942's The Palm Beach Story, starring Claudette Colbert, Joel McRae, Rudy Valley, and Mary Astor. Now, this was based on an original screenplay by Preston Sturges, and he used basically the same people that he always did. We had done a previous Preston Sturges movie with The Lady Eve, with Henry Fonda and Barbara Stanwyck. I wanted to do a Preston Sturges movie, so I chose 1941's The Lady Eve. Eve, starring Barbara Stanwyck and Henry Fonda. And a lot of the same people are in this movie. William Demarest, Franklin Pangborn, everyone's favorite sissy. Very, very, oh. very. Well. Now this one essentially is about a marriage. Uh, at the beginning of the movie, Joel McRae and Claudette Colbert are married and you, you see their wedding. And it's a screwball beginning during the credits. Somebody's tied in a closet and they're running to make it to the church and none of it's ever explained. They just get together, the marriage takes place and it says they all lived happily ever after. The camera pans back and it says, or did they? Then it's six years later, and they're broke. He's an architect, he can't get anything sold, she's tired of being poor, and Franklin Pangborn is showing these new people uh, this apartment. Well, one of the old guys that they're showing their apartment to is called the Weenie King. This guy is, it was, uh, Robert Dudley, he is such a funny actor. He talks like this, you know, and he's old, he can't hear very well. What's that, canary? I love birds. Claudette Colbert keeps running away from him because he's going through her closets, he tries her perfume, finally he goes in the bathroom, he pulls back the screen and there she is. What you doing in the bathtub with the wrapper on? I might ask you what you're doing in my bathroom. I don't suppose you go with the flat. No, that's too much to hope for. Thank you. Wait, what's the matter with you? Pretty girl like you? What, are you broke? She goes, yeah, I'm broke. He says, well, why didn't you say so? All I got is a lot of money. I never know what to do with it. How much do you want? I'm cheesy with money. I'm the weenie king, invented the Texas weenie. Lay off them, you live longer. Here, buy yourself a new dress, too, and a new hat. You're a fine girl. So long. Whoopee, hot figure. So she goes out, she pays the rent, her husband comes home, and she does, he doesn't believe her, of course, that, that this man just gave her all this money. It's all this malarkey about some old man paying the rent for you that the whole building is buzzing with. Uh, she says, well, it's over. You know, I love you, you love me, but we can't make it work. And she says, oh, I'm tired of being poor. I don't want to be poor. If you want a divorce, you're certainly entitled to it. I don't know where the money's coming from. So she takes him out on the last, their last $14. She spent all $700 paying off the bills, and she takes him out to dinner. And they come home, and she says, it's over. Tomorrow, it's over. So she says, I can't get the zipper on my dress. So she sits on his lap. He unzips the zipper. He starts kissing her back, and that's it. They'd end up in bed. Next morning, she wakes up and she's left him a note because she, she knows she can't resist him. He chases her out, half naked on the street. Great screwball running. He's running around. He's got a comforter wrapped around him. He keeps falling on his face. And she runs off and she's she's going. She goes to the train station. Well, he's pulled all of her. He's pulled her purse away. He's pulled her suitcase away. She's she's got no money. So the 20th Century Limited is going to to Miami Beach, and all these guys are getting on it and they're with the Ale and Quail Club. Now, they're all William Demarest, all these old guys that have been in Preston, every Preston Sturges movie and they're all drunk. So they all get together, they buy her a ticket, and they put her on the train. Ticket? Oh, I could never accept. We're just going to Savannah. But if you want to go any quail. further, I'd be glad to. You can be our mascot. You must be our mascot. So the next part of the movie is this crazy ride that they have to Miami, where they're on this train, and they sh they after they get drunk, they take out their rifles and they start shooting up the train, and everything is just a mess. She's trying to get away from them. She goes into this to try to climb up into this berth, you know, in the train, and she below her is Rudy Valley. And Rudy Valley leans out, and he's got these little those little spectacles on pinheads on, and she keeps stepping on them, and they, she, they keep breaking into his eyes. So <laughs> finally, he gets her up there, and he says, she says, oh, did I do that again? And he goes, no, no, it's all right. It's just a little glass, you know. It's <laughs> so they, what they finally do is they unhook the Ale and Quails Club's car and they leave it behind the train goes on to the next stop. Well, when it gets to the next stop, she finds out that this guy's name, Drudy Valley's name, is uh, J.D. Hackensacker. And he's the third richest man in the world. Very nice. Let's have that one too. How much is it? That is $212.50, monsieur. We'll take it. We'll take it. 
He buys her an entire wardrobe, everything she wants. Do, do you like bracelets? Girls like bracelets. All right, um, let's, let's have a bracelet. So she can't believe this has happened. She's hit the richest guy. They get on his yacht and they go to Miami. Is this yours? Oh, yes. Actually, it was my grandfather's, but he didn't like it. He only used it once. Meanwhile, back in New York, <laughs> Joel McRae is feeling sorry for himself. There's a knock on the door. He opens it up, and there's the weenie king. Hi, how are you? Where's that pretty girl that was here yesterday? Shit, that girl is my wife. I know she's pretty. I know a good-looking girl when I see one, so where is she? She's not here. Well, I don't blame her. That no-good husband of hers. She goes, well, I happen to be your husband. He says, well, that's not my fault. You should have got here first. That other guy got her, and he's no good, I'm telling have you got money for an area plane ticket? No. Then why don't you stay so instead of standing there like a big stink weed? How much do you need? So he gives Joe McRae the money. He goes, if I were you, I'd get on the plane and I'd meet her in Miami. What the hell have you got to lose? Her husband said, no good bum is just going to find her eventually anyway. So Joe McRae jumps on a plane, flies to Miami to meet the yacht. Well, also meeting the yacht is Hackensacker's sister, the Princess Centimelia, played by Mary Astor. Mary Astor is absolutely incredible in this movie. She is so funny. You're divorced, of course. No, no, not quite. Oh, that's marvelous. I don't think I'm quite through with the prince yet either. We could look for new husbands together. I'm thinking of an American at the moment. It seems more patriotic. She didn't get to utilize her comic talents very much, and they dyed her hair blonde, and they give her a Mary Boland part. Yes, what a lovely suit. He bought me this. <laughs> Why, Snoodles, you rat. We'll work this into something yet. This is perfectly electrifying. And she's got this little guy, Sig Arno, who plays Toto, who never utters a word. She goes, I think he's a He's from Europe, and he'll, she goes, he'll go, e see, yes, yes, and she goes, neats, Toto, neats, neats. No, no, Toto, his English is a little elementary. <laughs> neats. <laughs> and she's always trying to get rid of him. Every time he appears, he'll appear, he'll go, da, she goes, neats, Toto, neats. So then they get up to the top, there is Joel McRae. Joel McRae looks at them, and Mary Astor takes one look at him and goes, oh, he is quite interesting. Who's he? She goes, well, he's my brother. Oh, I like your brother. So now the two of them are romancing these two, and meanwhile, while backstage, they're kind of trying to repair their marriage. One thing leads to another, and it's all mixed up some identity. This one, he thinks this one is in love with him, she thinks he's in love with her, and it's all typical screwball comedy. It's really hysterically funny. This is the kind of thing that Claudette Colbert was perfect at. She was just wonderful in light, sophisticated comedies, like Midnight, we did Midnight before. And Joel McRae was one of the most underrated actors in Hollywood. He was so masculine and so, so handsome. And he really was really down-to-earth funny. He could really do this comedy. Oh, let her wait, whoever she is. She's no good for you anyway, while I, on the other hand... You never think of anything but topic A, do you? Is there anything else? And Mary Astor is just... Mary Astor was kept going to Preston Sturges. I, I'm not funny. I, I, don't, I don't... I'm not Mary Boland. You've got me in a Mary Boland part. He said, trust me, you are hysterical. You're going to run away with this movie. And she really does. She never got an opportunity like this to be this funny again. She's delightful. Oh, sit down, Toto. Stop following me around. Kush, klatz, zitz. Nitz. Yitz, Toto. And this is one of the great, great... Fun comedies. Oh, wait, right, Toto, this is not for children. You know everything up the dissolve, and then good night, sweetheart. I'll see you in the morning. You're gonna love Joel McRae, Claude Colbert, Rudy Valley, and the amazing Mary Astor in Preston Sturge's hysterical The Palm Beach Story. Let's all go to the lobby. I was happy, I was pretty, pretty hairy in the ballet. That's when I started using Nair. Ah, uh, straight, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> the popcorn can't be beat.